Do you know what complex post-traumatic stress disorder is? Sounds similar to its more commonly known sibling, post-traumatic stress disorder. Let me tell you, the addition of the word complex gives it a run for its money. The first time I heard complex PTSD, I was in a support group meeting and the host mentioned this diagnosis and gave an example of how it related to the symptoms many of us in the group were experiencing. A light bulb moment went off in my head and I knew I had to learn more. Now, a year and a few months later, I am doing a podcast on what it feels like to live with complex PTSD. Today, I want to talk about complex PTSD and share what I know so far about this diagnosis. Hi, I am Raisa, a survivor of narcissistic abuse, and I have complex post-traumatic stress disorder, and you are listening to Hello Trauma Brain, a podcast where I share my experiences living with complex PTSD. My hope is this podcast can help destigmatize mental health and provide support for anyone diagnosed with CPTSD who thinks they might have it or has a loved one with this diagnosis. Quick reminder, I am not a licensed psychologist or mental health care professional. And this podcast is not meant to replace nor substitute the care of psychologists, other mental health or medical health care professionals. If you think you might have complex PTSD or PTSD, please reach out to your primary care or mental health provider. This episode references trauma, abuse, and suicidal ideation, and listener discretion is advised. Remember, you can always pause or skip this episode at any time. And now, let's get back to the episode. Hello, dear survivors, and welcome back to this new episode of Hello, Trauma Brain. Thank you for joining me today. First things first, I want to thank you so much for the incredible feedback and lovely comments you have sent about the pilot episode. I am honored to have you all listening and find myself in this belief that the podcast is even out and that it has been well received. I have to say, since I released the podcast, I started to doubt whether or not I have CPTSD. I thought, what if my therapist thinks I have something else? Oh my, I just started a podcast about having CPTSD. What if my diagnosis changes? So today I had a therapy session and I told my therapist my concern. She confirmed I definitely have CPTSD and I felt a mixed bag of feelings. I felt relieved that I was not a fraud for this podcast And I felt grief that I have it. CPTSD is not easy to live with, and it gets created in very painful ways. Hearing that extra confirmation that, yep, that is me, was a lot for a moment. Turns out, I unknowingly decided to release this episode just a few days before CPTSD Awareness Day, which apparently is coming up on this Saturday September 2nd, 2023. I finally ordered the book that many call the Bible on complex PTSD. I literally just opened the packet that arrived at my door yesterday and can say that I finally own Pete Walker's book called Complex PTSD from Surviving to Thriving. Reminder that any individuals and resources I reference in this episode are not sponsoring Hello Trauma Brain. I will link Pete Walker's book in the show notes. The reason you didn't get this podcast sooner was that I was actually hoping to read this book before starting this podcast. However, I am not a fast reader, Hello Trauma Brain, and I am still finishing other books on my shelf. 
Eventually, as the months kept going by, I realized that if I waited until I read this book to start the podcast, it probably would not come out until 2025. (laughs) It dawned on me that I am not doing this podcast from the perspective of being the expert on CPTSD or as someone who knows everything there is about this diagnosis. This podcast is about living with CPTSD, and I already checked that box today, and I have for many years. I decided to instead take you on the journey of ordering the book and sharing here all the aha moments I will get as I dive into Pete's book. I look forward to learning more about the fawning response, which I know Pete Walker coined through his work. I will dedicate an entire episode on fawning, but for now, the best way to describe it is as the people-pleasing trauma response. Another term I am excited to learn more about is emotional flashbacks. I'm still learning to understand how those work. From hearing some examples, I know I have experienced them when waking up. Uh, I tend to feel like I am not good or deserving of good things happening to me on whatever day I wake up with an emotional flashback. And it's, it makes it really hard to get out of bed and face the day when it's happening. Today, I would like to talk about complex PTSD and what I know so far about this newer diagnosis. How does CPTSD show up for me? Let's define it first, and I will use a take on a metaphor I heard Stephanie Fu use in an interview. Stephanie has complex PTSD, and she wrote a memoir called What My Bones Know which is also on my reading list. And I will link this book in the show notes. A good point of reference is using an example of what post-traumatic stress disorder is. Now, PTSD, which commonly is known as something that a veteran can develop from being in war, uh, is a diagnosis that you can develop in other ways as well. So let's say... An individual involved in one car accident that causes trauma might develop PTSD. Now, CPTSD would be what may develop if you were to be in a car accident every week for 20 years. It is repeated trauma for an extended period of time. I have heard people call it a brain injury as it causes brain changes according to scans done in patients with CPTSD. CPTSD can also be referred to as relational trauma. According to Dr. Ramani Durvasala, in a video she did for Med Circle, CPTSD can include emotional numbing, fear and confusion about relationships, negative self view, seeing the perpetrator as all powerful while also having fantasies of revenge against the perpetrator. In the video, she outlines different signs of CPTSD that either the individual or loved ones can look out for. The first one is that people with CPTSD can experience a deterioration to their sense of value. And this can show up as feelings of self-hatred and suicidal ideation. Sadly, I suffer from these signs myself. My life has been saved by a mental health emergency hotline in the past more than once. And I am sharing this because I want you to know that you are not alone if you experience this sign as well. If you struggle with suicidal ideation, I strongly encourage you to please talk to a professional to create a safety plan and have 988 on speed dial on your phone. 988 is the emergency mental health hotline in the United States basically the 911 for our mental health. Now, I don't want to leave out anyone listening from another country, so I will provide a link I found online to open counseling's list of emergency services and mental health hotlines by country in the show notes. I was heartbroken to notice that not all countries have designated mental health emergency hotlines available. Even in the U.S., 988 is fairly new as well. And I really hope that changes. Another symptom of CPTSD can include cognitive signs. For example, an alteration of how the person perceives, thinks, and believes. A distortion often about the self. This often can show up as blaming ourselves or viewing ourselves as bad and damaged. Also something I experience uh, 
quite often it has gotten better. Often survivors, we will think things like, well, I shouldn't have said that, or I didn't leave, so it is my fault anyway. It's, uh, it's an overwhelming feeling of helplessness and powerlessness. And the thing with CPTSD is these feelings can bleed into other areas of our life. So you might blame yourself at work, with friends, even at the grocery store. For me, I would say in the past, I have been notorious for taking blame for what I do and for whatever the heck the other person also did. I just take blame for the whole thing, even things that I cannot control and things that are not really my responsibility. Another sign includes the flashbacks. Now, flashbacks can kind of bring the the survivor or the person with CPTSD uh, to a state of almost re-experiencing the trauma, and it can be triggered by anything like the time of the day, a sound, pretty much anything. And I think what makes uh, flashbacks and CPTSD a little bit more complicated is that often, because the trauma is so repeated, we can't really tell what exactly might be triggering us. When someone experiencing a flashback is thinking about it, they're really in it and cannot break out. It can look dissociated. And a, a common example of a flashback is what many movies portray with a veteran that goes to a celebration with fireworks and the fireworks can trigger a flashback to combat. Like I said earlier, Pete Walker coined a different type of flashback called emotional flashbacks, which is something that people with CPTSD might experience. I do know that a common emotional flashback for me is the I am in trouble emotional state. An email from a boss or feedback from an authority figure can trigger this for me. It has improved quite a bit for me since I started healing to the point where I have noticed when I make a mistake or when someone else points a mistake, I don't feel as devastated or life-threatened as I used to before. When going through a flashback, the individual feels it in their body. And one thing Dr. Romani said in her video was, trauma chops up the brain a bit. And our body's whole memory too, not just the brain. Another sign is disruption in attention, concentration, and memory. I definitely experienced these and it almost looks like ADHD. I need people to repeat things often and I am very perceptive so I can tell when someone is getting annoyed that I need them to repeat something. I would guess that probably they think I am distracted on purpose or I don't care. But the truth is I'm trying really hard to pay attention and my trauma brain keeps getting in the way. Honestly to this day I don't know how I did so well in school. I remember getting a test and spending the first 10 minutes stuck in an obsessive compulsive thought. Somehow, I would manage to finish the test and score well. It is almost like a part of me knew how much time I could afford doing the OCD before I had to really do the test. And I can't really explain how it works. However, I did get some bad scores, especially in college. Those times, I knew that had I been able to focus, I would have done better. I have seen an improvement in the symptom as I have been healing, and that is still something I have to cope with every single day as I struggle to fully concentrate. Another sign includes physical reactions to the trauma, and this can be seen as the body posture of the, of the person changing. Depending on the type of trauma they have, if they are recalling it, it almost uh, it can look like they're being held. For me, my shoulders will come up and kind of round forward, and that tends to cause a lot of neck and, and shoulder pain, and it's, it's very uncomfortable. And it's one of those things where I don't notice that I'm doing it. Before I know it, my shoulders are almost up to my ears and I'm not breathing anymore. I would also say that a lot of physical health problems that I have and still experience are linked to the trauma manifesting somatically, or in other words, trauma causing symptoms in the body. They do say trauma is stored in the body. And when it comes to CPTSD, I personally believe it takes deep root in the body and the nervous system. 
Another sign is dissociation, what tends to be common in trauma. And that happens when the person breaks away from reality. It's really a coping mechanism that shows up during a traumatic event. An extreme version of dissociation would probably be what uh, professionals would call dissociative identity disorder, which is when separated personalities dissociate from the host. And this is something that tends to be portrayed in movies and from what I've heard from some people, not very accurately. In post-trauma, this association can happen when reminded of the trauma or talking about trauma. I personally score high enough in the PTSD inventory to the point that in therapy, we need to watch out for disassociation. In my case, I did score low in the disassociation questionnaire, so I don't have dissociative identity disorder. However, I still notice that I tune out quite often. The last sign I want to talk about is the amnesia or blockage of a memory around trauma. This happens when the person cannot recall events around the trauma. It's basically a disruption in memory at the time of the traumatic event. In the MedCircle video, Dr. Ramani mentions that dissociative amnesia at the time of the trauma can happen. And when it does, it leads the survivor to doubt that the trauma even happened. It sounds like a very confusing catch-22 because the person who went through the trauma cannot remember the trauma because that is what the trauma brain does to protect the person. Can you imagine having symptoms caused by a traumatic event you cannot remember? Apparently, this is common for PTSD. Now, the thing with the complex PTSD is that there are so many episodes repeating themselves to the point where the individual might remember some and not others. I think this is true for me. I have been told of traumatic events that happened that I don't remember. Now, it might be gone consciously, but my body still knows. And so does my nervous system. And then there are events that I still remember to this day. One thing I do want to say is that having CPTSD has also given me some abilities that I consider advantages and gifts. And I'm not saying this to minimize or say that CPTSD is, is a gift or that trauma is a gift, but I'm saying it from the perspective of I don't want to paint this picture of doom and gloom and everything is horrible and we will never get better because I don't believe in that. I will dedicate an episode to the things that I think have come out from CPTSD that are helpful to me now. But for now, I will say that my ability to be attuned to other people and be empathic and supportive is something that I consider a result of having experienced so much trauma. We are not broken messes. If you have CPTSD, healing is possible and you can get better. There is no cure for this. However, that doesn't mean that there are no tools to cope because there are and we can learn them. There is a lot more to CPTSD and we will continue exploring this diagnosis in upcoming episodes. How is this relevant to trauma survivors? Diagnosis matters. It determines the treatment. CPTSD is fairly new, and not in terms of how long it has been around, but in terms of how long it has been recognized and studied. I personally think that complex PTSD has been around for a very long time, probably as long as human beings have been alive. However, CPTSD is not even in the DSM, which is the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders used in the United States. For me, as someone who lives in the U.S., that means my therapist cannot use it as a diagnosis code for insurance purposes. It also means that some mental health professionals might not know about CPTSD or how to treat it. CPTSD is in the International Manual, and I truly hope the new DSM address is adding CPTSD because it is not the same as PTSD. Now, the reason the name matters is CPTSD can look like other diagnoses. And if you get misdiagnosed, that means you will get the wrong treatment. 
It could mean you could be spending years taking medications that are not going to help your symptoms. Also, it could mean that the therapy style that you are being exposed to won't be as helpful. Dr. Ramani does say in her video with MedCircle that CPTSD tends to be misdiagnosed as borderline personality disorder. And there is a similar presentation. I think the suicidal ideation tends to be one of those overlaps between the two. And there was a time when I thought I had borderline. And now I know that what I have is complex PTSD. This is not about comparing one disorder to another, nor trying to imply that one is better than the other in any way. This is about emphasizing the importance of getting the right diagnosis because that determines the treatment. The treatment for borderline is going to be different from the treatment for CPTSD. Sometimes I think a point can land better if I use the body metaphor. So let's imagine for a second that you have symptoms in your body and your doctor misdiagnoses you with diabetes when what you have is a kidney disorder that requires a very different treatment. So the insulin and all the medication and the treatments they're giving you for the diabetes begin to cause chaos in your body. And the reason is because you were misdiagnosed. When you really think about that metaphor, it's a bit easier to grasp how dangerous it can be to misdiagnose a patient with the wrong condition. And the same applies to mental health. Now, what am I doing to heal? Things started changing for me when I started looking into trauma and became curious when I heard new terms. The more I exposed myself to new information, the more I began to learn more about myself and how to get better. I have been doing a deep dive on CPTSD and hearing from other people who have this diagnosis has been very helpful, especially at the beginning when I did not know I had it. Currently, I see a trauma-informed therapist that knows about CPTSD. I go to support group meetings with other people that have CPTSD, and I continue learning. There is a lot that I don't know yet, and quite frankly, a lot that the psychology field doesn't know yet either. For now, I will begin to read Pete Walker's book, and will share in this podcast what I learn. We deserve to know what the right diagnosis is for us. We deserve to get the most appropriate treatment. And we deserve to know that we are not alone. In this week's healing invitation, I want to offer you a few things to reflect about. Did any of the signs and symptoms I discussed today resonate with you or sounded like something you have noticed in a loved one? If you feel some bells going off, I invite you to check any of the linked resources from the show notes. You can also do your own research. Perhaps these signs do not sound like your experience. You can continue searching. CPTSD gets created differently for all of us, and it will look differently too. And it will get healed in different ways depending on the survivor. If it is available to you, seek a mental health professional to learn more and explore whether you might have CPTSD or not. Remember, not everyone who experiences trauma develops CPTSD. Please let me know how this week's healing invitation goes if you choose to accept it. Before we wrap up this episode, all music and production is courtesy of yours truly. Also, I want to share a few ways you can support this podcast. You can subscribe and leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or the platform you are using to listen. Share this episode with anyone you think can benefit from this content. Follow Hello Trauma Brain on Instagram. Subscribe to the Hello Trauma Brain YouTube channel and hit the notification bell to be the first to know when I post a new episode. And you can make a donation by getting me a coffee through the official bio site. No worries, all links will be provided in the show notes. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you found this episode helpful. 
Also, as part of CPTSD Awareness Day coming on this Saturday, September 2nd, I invite you to share this episode with someone who you think could benefit from learning a little more about what CPTSD is. I wish you the best as you continue to learn about complex post-traumatic stress disorder. It is time for our farewell affirmations. You are welcome to repeat after me. I am enough. I am lovable. And I deserve to heal. I wish you a gentle week and thank you for listening.